Chapter 4 Kashi Khand This chapter contains five sections. Chapter 4 Section 1 Vindhya Chal obstructs the path of Surya. Once, Sage Vyas narrated the following tale to all the assembled sages once. While wandering about, Sage Narad arrived at Vindhya Chal Mountain. He was received with great honor and respect by Vindhya Chal Mountain. But, when the time arrived for Narad to take his leave, he took a deep sigh, which made Vindhyachal extremely perplexed and he asked Narad if anything was wrong. Narad replied your rival Meru mountain is superior to you in every respect and this is the fact I am lamenting about. My deep sigh is just the indication of my worried state of mind. Vindhyachal Mountain was filled with inferiority complex and started waiting for an opportunity when he could prove his superiority to Meru Mountain. He thought perhaps Narad was right for even Lord Surya has great respect for Meru's might and this is the reason why he circumambulates my adversary. If I am able to beat Meru in height then maybe Lord Surya would start circumambulating me and this way I shall prove my superiority to Meru. Now, Vindhyachal started increasing his height and in a short time its peaks became invisible. The fallout of this amazing incident proved to be quite catastrophic for the world because even Lord Surya was left stranded at a particular point in the horizon. As a result, one part of the earth became too hot for any life to exist. Similarly, the other half of the earth became unbearably cold. The time became still and everything went haywire in the world. All the deities became extremely worried and went to Lord Brahma to seek his help. Lord Brahma advised them to go to Kashi and seek help from Sage Agastya. Deities were pleased at their good fortune of getting a chance to visit Kashi. Deities, after reaching Kashi paid a visit to Marikarnika Tirtha and took their bath. Subsequently, they went to Vishwanath temple and worshipped Lord Vishwanath. At last, they reached the hermitage of Agastya where he was busy worshipping a self-made Shivlinga. The entire hermitage was crowded with young pupils of Agastya. After the pleasantries having been exchanged, Sage Agastya asked the deities about the purpose of their visit. Chapter 4 Section 2 Agastya orders the Vindhya Mountains to diminish their size. When Agastya learnt of the problem created by Vindhya Chal, he agreed to help the deities despite fully aware of the fact that once he left Kashi it would not be possible for him to see his dearest Kashi once again at least in his present birth. Before leaving for Vindhyachal, he sought permission from Lord Bhairav. He then reached the place where Vindhyachal had obstructed the path of Surya. Lopamudra, his wife accompanied him. When Vindhyachal found Agastya staring angrily at him he became scarred and immediately minimized his size. Sage Agastya was pleased that his objective had been achieved without making any effort but he knew quite well that once he left the place Vindhyachal would regain his mammoth size. So he decided to do something so that Vindhyachal could not obstruct the path of Surya. He worked out a plan according to which he instructed Vindhyachal to wait for him until he returned after accomplishing his pilgrimage. Vindhyachal agreed assuming that Agastya would return in a short time. Vindhyachal thanked his good fortune of escaping Agastya's wrath, which could otherwise have threatened his very existence. Sage Agastya then went away never to return and Vindhyachal kept on waiting for his arrival. This way, the path being cleared, Surya was once again able to move freely on its orbit without any problem and as a result normalcy returned to the world. On the other hand, Agastya who was not at all happy leaving his dearest Kashi was desperate to get there back as soon as possible. But, he knew that his wish was going to remain unfulfilled. While wandering about, 
He reached Kolapur where he worshipped Goddess Mahalakshmi. When Goddess Mahalakshmi appeared, he asked her whether he would ever be able to reach Kashi in his present life. Goddess Mahalakshmi replied your wishes will be fulfilled in the coming 19th Dwapar, when you would incarnate as Vyas and would contribute a great deal in the propagation of the Vedas and Puranas. There is a sacrosanct place of Kartikeya not very far from here. Go there and pay your obeisance to Lord Kartikeya and he would unravel the mysterious aspects of Kashi to you. Sage Agastya and his wife Lopamudra then went to the mountain called Shri Shell, where Kartikeya lived at that time. Chapter 4 Section 3 Kashi, the sacrosanct place of pilgrimage after traveling for some time, both of them arrived near Shri Shell Mountain. Pointing his finger towards the mountain, Agastya told his wife one, who has a good fortune of seeing the peaks of this mountain, never takes a second birth. Lopamudra replied in amazement if the sight of this mountain was capable of giving salvation then why do you long for Kashi? Sage Agastya then went on to clarify that there were many other holy places capable of giving salvation. Prayag is one such place. It is capable of bestowing all the four Purusharth to Mandharma, Earth, Kam, and Moksha. Apart from Prayag, there are many more holy places like Nemisharanya, Kurukshetra, Ganga Dwar, Avanti, Ayodhya, Mathura, Dwarka, Badri Kashram, Purushottam Kshetra which are capable of giving salvation to a man. But none of these places can match Kashi because Kashi is incomparable. Chapter 4 Section 4 Lord Kartikeya Describes the Majesty of Kashi Sage Agastya and his wife Lopamudra circumambulated Shri Shell Mountain and climbed up Lohit Mountain where they found Lord Kartikeya. Both of them eulogized Kartikeya by singing Vedic hymns in his praise. Lord Kartikeya was extremely pleased by their devotion and said O revered sage. You can understand Kashi's importance by the fact that, though I am capable of reaching any place according to my wish but still, here I am doing this austere penance for the attainment of Kashi. I must confess that I have not been successful in my efforts till date. If anybody thinks that he can attain to Kashi just by performing austerities then he is totally wrong. Kashi can never be attained to until and unless one has the blessing of Lord Mahadeva. And one who is fortunate enough to have reached Kashi must under no circumstances leave it till he is alive. O oh, Agastya! You are blessed because you had the good fortune of residing at Kashi. Please allow me to touch your body, which has acquired holiness due to its proximity to Kashi. Having said this, Kartikeya touched different parts of Agastya's body as if he were touching the sacred soil of Kashi. Chapter 4 Section 5 The Origin of Kashi Sage Agastya asked Lord Kartikeya how the sacrosanct place, Kashi came into being. He also asked how Kashi became famous as a place capable of giving salvation to a man. Lord Kartikeya revealed to Agastya that once Parvati had asked Lord Shiva the same question. Lord Shiva had told her at the time of deluge when everything had submerged in the ocean and darkness prevailed everywhere. Only Brahm the embodiment of truth existed at that time and nothing else. Brahm, the absolute truth is indescribable and inexpressible. No name can be attributed to him. He is the absolute truth, the ultimate knowledge, the infinite, the omnipresent and the eternal bliss. Though basically formless he attained a form on account of his own wish. That form is none other than me. Later on I created Prakriti from my body. All three of us, Shiva, Parvati and Kashi, manifested simultaneously by the grace of Adi Purush, the Almighty God.
continuing with the tale of Kashi's greatness. Kartikeya told Agastya there is no holy place as dear to Lord Shiva as Kashi, which is not abandoned by him as well as his consort Parvati even at the time of deluge. Lord Shiva named this holy place Anandavan, because it gave immense joy to him. Subsequently, Lord Shiva and Goddess Jagdamba put a glance on the left portion of their respective bodies as the result of which a divine entity manifested himself who was none other than Lord Vishnu and who was named Purushottam by Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva after blessing Purushottam went away. Later on, Lord Vishnu created a divine reservoir with his Sudarshan Chakra and filled it up with his sweat. He then engaged himself in an austere penance. Lord Shiva once again appeared along with Parvati and blessed Vishnu by saying this holy place will become famously known as Marikarnika because this is the very place where I had once lost my diamond earring. Lord Vishnu made a request to Shiva may this place fulfill the wishes of those who seek salvation. Since it is blessed with your eternal presence hence its another name would be Kashi. Lord Shiva assured Vishnu by saying this sacrosanct place is very dear to me and no event takes place here against my wish. Even if a person living here happens to be a sinner he has nothing to fear because I protect him. One who lives far from Kashi but remembers it with reverence becomes absolved of all his sins. There is a magnificent Shiva Linga at Kashi famously known as Kashi Vishwanath. Here is situated one of the twelve Jyotir Lingas. Just as the sun is visible in the whole world despite its presence at a particular point in the horizon, in the same manner Kashi has its influence throughout the length and breadth of the world.